Hello, Uggies Worldwide. I'm Dave Kassler, amateur radio call sign KE0OG, here with another episode of Ask Dave. Today's question comes from Kyle, and he's a new ham, and he hasn't put his call sign in here. Hey, Kyle, you'll understand the longer you're in ham radio, the more your call sign is your identity and you'll start calling yourself by a call sign, people will refer to each other by their call signs or suffixes. Says Dave Newham here, love your YouTube channel. Well, thank you. I have a question regarding my first antenna, presumably for general class. I am looking at buying and putting an NFED half-wave antenna. They are available from a number of providers, including the ARRL itself, which sells it as a kit for under $100. Says I'll probably go with the popular 49 to 1. The 49 to 1 ratio is the balun ratio. Actually, technically an un un unbalanced to unbalanced. And it means it goes into 50 ohms, comes out at 2450, which is about the right impedance to end feed a dipole. Okay, whether or not you need a counterpoise on that depends on the length of the cable from the antenna back to the shack. If it's convenient to do so. Make that piece of cable fairly long. Make sure it gets thoroughly grounded at the lightning arrestor before it comes into your shack. The counterpoise problem will take care of itself. Otherwise, you can create a little counterpoise for it. There will be instructions with the antenna. My question is, if I buy an NFED half wave that covers 80 through 10 meters, that claims no tuner is needed for all bands, that is not Correct. They're making a claim that they can't support with fact. You see, you're not putting up your antenna on some sort of an antenna test range. You're putting up your antenna in real life. There's trees, houses, buildings, cats and dogs, and, and propane tanks, and whatever you may name it that are around there. And the first rule of antennas is that everything affects everything. Okay, so just beware of that. It will cover 80, 40, 20, 17, 15, 12, and 30, uh, and 10 also maybe 30. You will probably need the antenna tuner that is built into your rig to touch it up, okay, to get it to where it needs to be. Inside most rigs, they'll cover up to three to one SWR. You can bring it down to one to one with that tuner in there with no problems. I have tested these in, I tested the ones from my antennas, which is a nice one. I've also tested the one from the league, which covers 40 and up. Now, if it covers 40 and up, that means it's 60 to 65-ish feet long. There's only one way to tune it, and that's to shorten it or lengthen it. And so you tune it for the lowest band, and then it falls in place for the upper bands. You usually tune it to the lower part of each band, but it'll still cover all of 40 meters. And then, if you do it with the 41, it'll have 40, 20, 15, and 10. That's it. But if you do the 80 meter one, you can often also pick up 30, maybe, 17, and 12. Okay? So, you pick up more bands because it's longer, it's got more uh, stuff to play with. Okay? Now, his question, how does this work, I don't have a good answer for. I suppose if I modeled it, and I've never modeled a, uh, an unun into an antenna, but if you model it, you can probably look at what the current distribution is at the various frequencies. The fact is, it does work. I remember the first time I got one, it was sent to me by my antennas. And I put the thing up going, this ain't going to work. They kind of suggested putting it up as an inverted V. So I took the center of it up 20 feet, the two ends at seven feet, so they'd be below or above people walking by it. The thing worked beautifully. I thought, "Wow, what an antenna!" Okay, now I've since given that as part, uh, given it away as part of our channel giveaways. But if you take the one from the ARRL, which says it's a forty-nine to one, made by a certain company for the ARRL in kit form it will work up to 80 meters too. So you have to add another 60 some odd foot piece of wire to the very end of it, okay? And you only get part of 80 meters, and the only part of 80 meters you're gonna get is the bottom part, 
where FT8 is, and you'll get that, and then all of the other bands. If you try and tune that thing for 75 meters, you'll end up throwing all the other bands off. It's kind of weird. You've got an antenna that works on multiple bands with a grand total of one adjustment point. And right there, you can see you could easily uh, get into trouble with that kind of thing. Okay, so 40 will go 20, 15, and 10. Okay, and I would recommend the 49 to 1 Ballon. You don't have to buy it separately. You can buy it with the, the cable. If you buy it from, like, my antennas, it has a small cable part way up it to help nudge the frequencies into the right place. So what you're going to do is set it up the way you want it. Now you got to think about, is it worth the extra 60 feet to get a part of 80 meters, usually the, the bottom part that'll be the part that has FT8? Okay, is that worth it to you? Then do it, by all means. If you don't have the room, don't do it. Don't worry about it. Now, I would recommend treating an NFED half wave kind of as it comes. Uh, you can use your tuner and your radio to touch it up, but I wouldn't use it to force it to work on bands like, say, 30 or 60 that it doesn't really want to work on. Because all that does is create a lot of uh, circulating currents in your coax, and you're warming your coax, but you're not warming the radio of a ham on the other side of the world. So, I hope that answers your question. I really like the NFED half-wave antenna. Now, I'm going to say something, and I'll just say it. A dipole is a dipole is a dipole. It doesn't matter how you feed it. It's still a dipole. You can feed it at the middle. You can feed it off-center. You can feed it at one of the ends. It's still a dipole, and it's still going to behave the same way. So if you're going to make an inverted V out of this thing, you're still going to feed it at the end and take the middle up to the high point and the end down to the low point and whatever you want to do. They're pretty flexible antennas. So there you have it. Good luck with your antenna. Hope to see you on the air. And until we next meet, 73.